Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. For Real Agriculture, I'm Kelvin Hepner, and on this episode of The Soil School, we are pleased to be in uh, this wheat field joined by Tristan Beyer, Crop Nutrition Lead for Western North America with Mosaic. And Tristan, when it comes to fertilization rates compared with removal rates of uh, the key nutrients from our, our soils, you, of course, cover a, a large territory of North America. What are you seeing in terms of trends? I guess when you look at soil test trends, there's a few things that we can look at. You can obviously look at them on your own field by taking your own soil samples, and that's a great way to be able to fine-tune and know within your field spatial variability as well as how individual fields differ in their nutrients. But if we look broader than that, uh, we can go on some studies looking at broad uh, nutrient findings across North America. The Fertilizer Institute's actually recorded some of the trends of soil tests over the years. And there's actually been some pretty stark, uh, remarkable findings that uh, the soil tests are a good reflection of are people adequately fertilizing for their crops? And if not, it's reflected in the soil tests. Are there general trends in terms of regions of North America where soil sample results tend to be short on, on certain certain macronutrients? For sure. When we look at the nutrients, they'll vary a little bit depending on the specific nutrient. If we look at phosphorus, for example, uh, generally, as a general rule, we see that Western North America uh, is usually a little bit lower in phosphate, but higher native potassium soil test levels, where in the eastern side of North America, we'll see lower potassium levels and higher phosphate. But that being said, uh, even within each of those nutrients, we find that across North America, in Canada and in the U.S., that the soil test levels for both P and K have been declining. That means we're not fertilizing to removal rate. Unfortunately, that is one of the key tellers of it. Um, there's different reasons why we see that. One is from nutrients uh, just not being, the fertilizer rates not being applied with crop removal. And the other thing is many of us have been, I'll say, stuck in a routine of applying uh, the same rates over a number of years, and over that same time frame, we see that the nutrient removal has increased. In other words, uh, our crop yields have gone up, and our nutrient coefficients of pounds per removal have stayed relatively the same. Can you give us some specific examples, Tristan, of uh, some of the numbers that soil tests are showing when it comes to uh, these removal rates not matching uh, or in exceeding the fertilization rates? Yeah, so if you look at specific examples, we'll start with phosphorus. You know, phosphorus, if you look across Canada, over half of the samples are coming back low or deficient. When I say deficient, it's below their uh, university or their state or province recommendations. And across North America on, in a whole, uh, the states and uh, Canada included, where 46% of samples are coming back low in phosphate. The, import, the reason why that's important is showing that of agronomic management practices we know that we can control we have ways to manage around this is a known limitation that could be corrected with you know fertilizer adequate fertilizer applications so that was on FOSS what about on uh, the potassium side of things potassium is much of the similar results I think about 44 45 percent of the samples are coming back low across North America and it varies a little bit depending on geographies I think even in the west what's alarming is that uh, many of the the states or the provinces have been used to the soils testing higher in K, but we've been seeing a steady drop, and that's exasperated in areas that are taking off extra straw or stover that you see. So in this wheat field that we're standing in, if we're taking grain, we don't see the potassium levels drop as quick as when the stover is removed. Mm -hmm. Sulfur? Sulfur is one of those things from a soil test. It may be not as fine-tuned of a recommendation as what we see with phosphorus or potassium, but it's neat because it gives you good trend lines. And one of the things that we've been seeing is uh, the magnitude of a, a potassium soil test. You're looking at a, a few ppm, you know, six, seven, eight ppm is usually kind of the thresholds that we're seeing. And the, the percent that have been uh, increasing in deficiency or the numbers that are coming back low has been... Uh, increasing but it's not been as increasing as the rate as what p and k has and there's a couple of reasons why i think that is uh one is we in the last 10 years there's been greater recognition that we need sulfur and there's many of these areas that are applying sulfur more to their uh, rotation and the other thing is just somewhat of an artifact of the sulfur soil testing of itself is that because sulfur once it's converted to, to sulfate and it moves through the soil profile is that it's somewhat 
equilibrated each year. So we don't see as much of the large fluctuations in the sulfur soil test as what we see with the P or K where those uh, maybe lack of fertilizer applications get magnified over time. Okay. How about on the, the micronutrient side of things with maybe zinc, for example? So when you look at micronutrients such as zinc, uh, it's oftentimes one of those things that are forgotten when we take a soil test. We focus fo primarily on our, our macronutrients, but zinc is just as important, equally as important as our macros. They're just needed in much smaller quantities. So when we look at the deficiency levels of zinc across North America, they aren't as high as what we see with our macronutrients, but they are and have been increasing. For example, in, uh, north of the border, we're seeing over 30% of the samples coming back low in zinc, and it's partially contributed to greater crop removal, greater yields, and if it's something we haven't been fertilizing for, uh, it's, we're finally mining in those soils down to a level where zinc is becoming more deficient. All right. Finally then, Tristan, what do you recommend in terms of uh, where producers or growers go f to find out more about their crop removal rates, depending on yield, of course, and there are other factors, whether you're removing the straw, but what do you recommend for resources there uh, to figure out what you're, what's actually happening in your field? Well, there's a couple things. Obviously, you could track all the, the nutrients within your own field, and that'd be the ideal scenario so you know exactly what you're moving. But that is intensive from a labor perspective and time management in the fall. But there are some other good, useful uh, tools at your disposal. One is get together with a local uh, retailer or an agronomist. Many times they'll have a crop nutrient uptake and removal chart. I know Mosaic, we've worked with uh, looking at some of the latest findings on the nutrient uptake and removal of different cro uh, crops. And we find that the, the nutrient uptake and removal is unique to specific geographies many times. Of course. Your local data, field-specific data, is probably always better, but as a rule of thumb, as a guideline for planning purposes and, and other aspects of understanding, uh, a, a worksheet like that can be quite useful. For sure. Yeah. Like, I could give an example on this. If you look at, like, canola. If I look at, let's just pick a, an average yield of maybe 50, 50 bushels per acre. If you look at the nutrient removal coefficient for phosphorus and then correlate that to how many pounds of phosphate fertilizer you need, there's a number of different phosphate fertilizers you could use, but Microcentrals or S, Microcentrals S15 is probably one of the most common phosphate fertilizers used on canola. And we find that uh, you need a uh, about 124 pounds of microcentrals S15 just to remove the, the phosphate equivalent. Now there are other nutrients within microcentrals. There's some nitrogen, there's two different forms of sulfur to provide some season long sulfur availability. But just on that phosphate alone that we know that if we're getting 50 bushel canola and we're not applying 124 pounds of, of uh, microcentrals S15, we are going to pull down our soils. And coincidentally, if we are in years that might look like more favorable yields and your yields come up higher than what you were uh, planning for, your crop removal is going to exceed that of what was put out. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for your time and your uh, expertise, and we'll definitely check out that worksheet. Uh, we'll include the link with the, the video here. Thank you, Tristan. No problem. Thank you very much.